Hello YouTube! Tonight I'm off to the theatre, as I am most weeks, and tonight I'm going with Today Tix. We're off to the Garrick Theatre to see Romeo and Juliet. This is really exciting for me because I rarely go to see Shakespeare, so I'm super super excited to see the show, and of course I wanted to take you along with me and to show you what the theatre's like, what my seat is like, and also obviously what I think of the show. So I hope you enjoy! in and around Leicester Square and Leicester Square Station but I finally made it out and I'm just walking to the theatre now I'm going to try and not get run over Theatre, it's the interval now, and I am really enjoying this so far. I'm not great on Shakespeare, I studied Romeo and Juliet at school, so I kind of I mean, everyone knows what happens in Romeo and Juliet, don't they? But I find this retelling really interesting, and yeah, it's really enjoyable so far. Um, I'm in the dress circle, and it's a really good view, and there's a slight safety rail in front, so that's a little bit uh, it's not really that disrupting, it's blocking the view a tiny bit. Um, yeah. It's really good so far. The last time I was in the Garrick, I sat at the front row and that was really, really close. So this is really cool to be seeing a completely different view of the show here. It's a gorgeous theatre. I never realised just how beautiful it was from the from the stalls. Like you can see so much more from the dress circle of like the beauty of the theatre. So that's really nice. And I'm just admiring some of the production photos. They're really gorgeous photos. And it's quite nice. There's a few familiar faces in this, especially Zoe Rainey, who I actually last saw almost a year to the day in Ireland. Um, she's really great in this. Um, yeah, I am. Um, I will talk more about this show afterwards uh, when I've obviously seen all of it. But in total thoughts, really enjoying it. Well, I've just left the Garrick and I'm walking to Embankment now to get my train home. Um, I really, really enjoyed Romeo and Juliet and I'm going to talk a lot more about it when I'm home. I've just made it home and I wanted to talk a little bit about the show. As it's Shakespeare, it's so complex, I feel, to talk about shows like this. And it's been a long time since I've been exposed to Shakespearean language. So I definitely feel like there were bits of the show that I missed out on or couldn't quite keep up with which is an absolute credit to the actors and actresses on stage because whew, there is a lot of words in this show if anyone knows like the word count of this show i would be like really fascinated to know it some of the monologues are absolutely insane i don't know how they remember them the rehearsal process must be intense and then as well the way they act them That is some skill right there. Previous to this, I hadn't seen a um, a production directed by Kenneth Branagh. It was really interesting. I wasn't expecting it to be like that at all, really. There were elements of dance in the show. There, it was. It felt quite modern. It was really funny, as I mentioned briefly in the interval. The cast are really excellent. I mean, I'm really, I'm really tired right now, so I can't remember names as such. But we definitely had the understudy for Romeo, and I recognise his face from somewhere. I'm definitely going to have to look him up. Maybe he's just got one of those faces. But he was terrific, great acting. And then it was Lily James as Juliet, who I know she's famous. She's like a big name, I think, in television. But I 
don't think I've actually seen her in whatever she's famous for, but that was quite nice because probably a lot of people expect a lot more from her maybe. Whereas I just went in with kind of zero expectations or, um, yeah, zero expectations. Well, I apologise about that interruption. Um, I have come back to the same spot on the sofa to carry this on though. Um, so that's some continuity to this segment of the vlog. One thing I don't think I mentioned in the previous segment was how interesting I found the set of this show. It really reminded me of City of Angels at the Dormar Warehouse. Just in the way, but basically if you didn't see City of Angels, they really cleverly designed the set and costumes. There was the perspective of the writer of City of Angels who was in the present and in colour and then the characters within his story that were in black and white and the set really interestingly changed from colour to black and white. It was amazing. Um, I would love to see that show again. So it really reminded me of that in the like the tone and style and colouring of the set. I'm not sure if this comes across in the production images, I haven't seen an image of the full set but if there is one that kind of shows what I'm on about I'll insert it here for you to kind of see what I mean. The set also had pillars, like four of them or something, which came up and down at points which was really interesting and like a gentle way to change the scene. You have some shows that have a lot of sets that rotate in and out and I think it's really nice, especially with a play, to have it really simple. You don't want too much going on, especially when it's something like Shakespeare where it's so wordy and there is already a lot going on. I don't think I ever appreciated when I was younger and studying Shakespeare in school just how funny it is. And I'm not sure if this is something that is different from an adult perspective as to when you're a teenager, perhaps when I was a teenager anyway, I'm not going to generalise it for all teenagers because some of them might get the humour of Shakespeare but I think when you're sort of forced to study something and it's not really your cup of tea, it's not, uh, it's not what you normally read or see performed, you just kind of think well it's Shakespeare, it's not funny but as an adult seeing it performed and due credit to the actors for performing it so well because they made some bits really hilarious and I think this might be to do with the direction at some points as well and yeah just the uh, performers themselves because at some times it was just a way that a word was performed or a sentence or a bit of their monologue or whatever it was like inflections at the end of sentences or facial expressions or mannerisms that really made it funny and you really need something like that when it uh, can be a bit of a heavy show. <laughs> the whole cast were really, really superb. As I said, there's so many words in Shakespeare and to remember all of them, I am so impressed. It's incredible. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap this up now before I just babble on. Thank you to Datex for giving me the ticket to go and see Romeo and Juliet at the Garrick Theatre. I really appreciate it. Going to see more Shakespeare is on my bucket list. I really want to visit the Globe Theatre this summer because I've never been and I feel like I really need to. So this has given me the boost to make more of an effort to go and see Shakespeare and just plays in general. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do give it a like if you have and do subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more from me in the future. I hope everyone's having a great week and I will see you in my next video. Bye!